everyone for attending this uh, public transit human service transportation coordinated plan for San Bernardino County, our workshop. Um, as, as you know, or anyone who's ending applied for 5310 funding uh, or measure I knows that um, the coordinated plan is really what helps us deliver those 5310 projects. And the federal government does require that we do this so that we make sure that we're in tune with what the needs are, especially with people, of se seniors, disabled, and as well as low income. So I'm hoping that you will actively participate in this meeting. I know that sometimes we're in meetings and we get uncomfortable, especially when we have an idea or a thought. Um, there are no bad ideas. Well, maybe most of the time when my kids have ideas, they're, they're kind of bad, but that's another story. <laughs> Anyways, so please, you know, feel free to um, wear prompted or thought, you have any thoughtful comments. If you don't think of anything now, but afterwards, please reach out to Heather, Valerie, or Dennis, so, or myself as well, and we can just talk over those ideas. That would be great. As much participation that can be provided will be helpful, especially since, you know, we, this, you know, SBCTA, although we are actively involved with our transit operators and nonprofits, we are not at the ground level working with um, your clients or um, consumers of transportation. So with that, I'll leave it in Valerie's hand. And in a minute, you'll also see my husband online. He, he is part of the Southern California Transit Advocate. So um, I'm not running away. I'm now just sharing a screen with him. So you're more, more than happy to, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions, so. Thank you, Nancy. Um, good morning, everyone. Again, as Nancy said, we are so grateful you're here. Thank you for spending this time with us. Um, we're This is our final outreach opportunity for the Public Transit Human Services Transportation Coordination Plan. Um, so we really value your input. It's critical and required, um, and we want to make sure we do a good job. Um, so we're grateful you're, you're here to join us. Um, We've been working on this plan since the summer, uh, so we have a lot of wealth of information to share, but we want to, um, to focus the, the outcome, the strategies and goals. So I'll try to keep my comments brief before I pass it off to Heather Menninger. What we'll talk about today is um, what the coordinated plan is, what are its purposes, and how do we approach that. And I'll share a bit of the findings we learned um, through the process that we began this summer. Uh, then Heather is going to share our responses to enhanced mobility. These are the goals and strategies, the whole outcome of um, our multiple steps of outreach and um, analysis that we've conducted. Um, and we'll have some breaks for discussion as she goes through. So please um, speak up, share comments, questions. Um, we want this to be interactive. I, I know it is awkward in Zoom, um, but, but we, we do want to hear from you. That's the whole purpose here. Um, so we're grateful for, for any comments, thoughts, or, or things we've overlooked that you'd like to share. Um, and at the end, um, I'll share another way that we can get some input for you. We have um, a easy survey online to prioritize these strategies. Um, so I'll show you how you can, um, after this workshop or through the end of the week, um, give us your um, input there. So with that, I will launch into what the coordination plan is. Um, so again, this is the Public Transit Human Services Transportation Coordination Plan for San Bernardino County. This um, update is for the years 2021 through 2025. This plan is required by the federal, federal transit funding bill and it must be updated every four years. So that's what we're in the middle of. Um, the primary purpose of this plan is to identify transportation gaps and needs for the target populations of older adults, persons with disabilities and persons of low income. We've also added in groups who tend to fill in some or, or all of those um, groups and also tend to be underserved or unserved by transit. So we include veterans, persons experiencing homelessness and tribal members. Another huge purpose of this plan is to develop strategies to improve those gaps and needs that we've undercovered. And that's what Heather is going to discuss. What are those recommended strategies from what we've heard? This plan is critical for our county because it supports several funding programs. It has no money attached to it, um, except for the way it's related to these two grants. Um, the Federal Transit Administration Section 5310 program that provides capital and operations funding for transportation projects that serve seniors and persons with disabilities. And also Omnitrans' Regional Mobility Partnership Program through Me the Measure I Sales Tax Program. Um, which also supports uh, transportation projects serving persons with disabilities and older persons. Um, and if you have any questions about that, Aaron Moore is on the line and he'd be happy to answer those. 
Um, so both of those two programs require that the coordinated plan be cited. Um, so your, your project and uh, your need has to be in the coordination plan, um, which is why we do such extensive outreach and really want to hear for you to make sure that when you're going for these grants, um, this plan is just going to help you. Um, this plan can also be useful, useful for multiple discretionary grant programs. Um, we've used it in Riverside County with, with their plan um, to get Federal Transit Administration rides to wellness money um, because the need was so well documented. Um, so as I go through some more slides, I will show you how this plan can be useful as a resource to grant writers. And then the third purpose of this plan is to encourage coordination and partnerships. Um, we want to better leverage the resources that exist in this county, even though they are scarce, they are there. Um, so we want to encourage coordination between the different transit providers and planning departments. Um, so this plan lays out some strategies to do that better. So we talked about what the plan is. This slide here shows who the plan concerns, those target populations I showed. Um, so in the county, we have about 2.2 million residents. And among those, almost 12% are older adults. 10.4% have a disability, a quarter are living in poverty, 5.7 are veterans, almost 15% have a limited English proficiency, and youth under the age of 18 are more likely to live in poverty than adults or older adults, and older adults are most likely to have, are more likely to have a disability than adults or youth under 18. What this chart is not showing is the incredible growth that we're undertaking in this county. We're move, growing at a faster rate than the state. Uh, by 2030, we should increase by 8% to 2.4 million residents. So that's who we're concerned about in the universe of the coordination plan. Uh, here's another look at that. We spent a bit of time um, in our demographics chapter talking about who makes up the county as a whole and then who makes up the various subregions. Um, so this is one resource uh, for you grant writers um, that are perhaps in San Bernardino Valley or in the mountains area or the Morongo Basin. Um, there's detailed information about who's living in your county and, and how they're getting around. So I recommend when the plan's available um, that you take a look at it and use it in your um, grant efforts. The next step we did after the um, demographics analysis was a county transportation in inventory. Uh, we looked at what is a network that exists and where are there gaps um, where does service not exist. And in San Bernardino County, in our huge geography, there's lots of places just by geography it's not possible. But we do, but we do have our six public transit operators and Metrolink providing rail service throughout Southern California. There's also specialized transportation projects. I talked about the two grant programs that are receiving funding here in San Bernardino County. Um, importantly is Aaron Moore's Omnitrans Regional Mobility Partnership Program. He has 15 partners that tend to be cities or nonprofits that are providing programs like demand response or mileage reimbursement programs for seniors and persons with disabilities. And then the FTA section um, 53, 5310 program, again, is providing capital and operations funding they, in 2019, had their most recent call and nine um, applicants were awarded funding there. Here's another look at the um, transit system graphically. Um, again, this is a resource that's about available in the plan that we ask you to use freely. This shows the transit network um, by region. Um, so for you uh, people applying for 5310, it can be very helpful to show where there is service or where there isn't and why your project is so critical. Um, finally, I want to talk about um, the overall outreach we did and, and a little bit of what we learned before I hand it over to Heather. Um, this summer, we did agency interviews with stakeholders. Uh, we typically have workshops, but the, this year we adapted to COVID and had a bunch of Zoom interviews. We talked to 25 different agencies. Um, it was actually really great. Folks wanted to talk and had the time since we were on Zoom. So we talked to folks that work across the county with um, all different types of individuals under the target populations. We had two presentations to Inland Empire Disabilities Collaborative, one presentation to PASTAC early in the process where we brought back our preliminary findings and a presentation to the Homeless Partnership. We used all that information that was largely about needs, how people are traveling, how we're, they're using the system or how they're not, how it's not working for them. And we created an e-survey, which we launched in the winter. Um, we promoted that broadly. It was available in English and Spanish. Um, it was online survey. Folks could follow the link and um, respond to the survey. Despite all the promotion, we had a pretty low uh, response rate, but we got really rich information. Um, 286 individuals responded. 60 of those were from agency staff persons and 226 were from the general public. And now we're in the third phase of, of 
outreach, this um, virtual open house period, um, where, as I said, there's a um, um, through the end of the week, you know, can respond. SBCTA has a web page for us at gosbcta.com slash coordination plan. There's an open house tab. If you go there, you can find information about the plan, more detailed here, findings. Um, you can take a link to the survey that will allow you to rate the strategies that Heather will detail um, and you can provide comment that way on, on what you think about how those should be implemented for your clientele and community. So I just want to give a look at the kind of information that the survey brought back. We asked folks what kind of transportation challenges they experienced in the past year, and we heard from 203 individuals. And again, these um, challenges were derived from those conversations with stakeholders, from past coordination plans, from what we've heard about from trans operators, the kind of complaints we get. So we used um, all the information available to ask folks what, what they run into. The top three challenges um, here are circled. Um, a half, about a half of respondents trouble have trouble with a lack of safe sidewalk or bike paths for active transportation for walking safely in their community. 35% said that transit trips take longer than their ability to travel. We know that is a huge problem in this like very giant county with major destinations that tend to be in San Bernardino Valley. And then 22% said they don't know how to ride transit. The next top three um, challenges are circled here. 16% said they had difficulty doing local trips around their community for appointments or grocery shopping. So just normal traveling um, that they struggled with. 13% had trouble um, with specific times or specific destinations for work, getting to their shift on time on public transit. And then 10% had difficulty with long distance medical trips. So that's just a, a brief look at the information we learned from the survey and it's what led us to the goals and strategies that Heather will walk us through. Um, what we recommended from all this analysis and talking to people to enhance mobility in the county. So with that, Heather, I'll ask you to walk us through the goals and strategies. All right, thank you, Valerie. And I wanna assure you all that we have um, three different opportunities for comment, question, and reaction as I move through these strategies, at least three. Um, and there may be some comments about Valerie's material, but thank you very much. So as, as she's indicated, the primary output of the coordinated plan are these goals and strategies. They lead to projects. The projects hopefully pull down funding and we are able to implement them in our county. But I've been reflecting on what a coordination plan is not. It is not a technical document like a short range transit plan or like a uh, very technically focused uh, zero emissions fueling plan. It's not a funding plan. It doesn't particularly direct where dollars go. What it is, as Valerie has conveyed, is an examination of the unserved, underserved uh, populations and trip types, um, including for persons of color, persons of low income, adults uh, with disabilities and older adults what do we uh, need to understand about their unmet and undermet needs? And this plan then brings together from the wealth of resources of which Valerie has highlighted a few, what we're calling a roadmap. How can we build a roadmap towards better mobility, enhanced mobility? But how do we do that? What specifically needs to be done? How do we get there? That's where the goals and strategies come in and from those, the projects by which we get things um, accomplished. Finally, the roadmap is, uh, is geared towards multiple audiences. Certainly SBCTA in its oversight role, obviously the public transit operators who hold the largest portfolios in this, absolutely the human service transportation providers, uh, but also other partners like large institutions, healthcare, education, and so forth and certainly the cities and jurisdictions. I think SCAG may still be on the line, so there's probably a SCAG message in here as well too. Um, so let's get started with this roadmap. The next slide, please. It's structured around these four goals. Uh, number one, support public transportation. Number two, build capacity of specialized and alternative programs. Number three, promote choices and educate. And number four, infrastructure. These will help to enhance mobility for target populations. But I think the secret of the coordinated plan, which is not really a well-kept secret at all, is that it will enhance mobility for all. So now we're gonna walk through each of the strategies um, by uh, goal. And I would just ask you to bear with me. And at the end of goal one, we will open it up for comments. So please make a note. 
Goal one is supported by the largest number of strategies, eight, um, bringing together the findings from the coordinated plan process and focusing them on actions to be taken by bus, by rail, by van programs, and by van pool as well. We included van pool in the public transportation category in this cycle because of the expansion both by San Bernardino and Victor Valley in that important um, mode option. So moving quickly through each of the strategies, I will um, again, invite comment at the end of those. Next slide, please. These first three strategies were grouped together in terms of what we heard from uh, our stakeholders about essential workers and essential trips, what they want and what they need. Number one, to increase frequencies. Number two, to improve bus travel speeds. And the third one, to maintain span of service hours and days. Um, it was very impressive. The frequency um, was identified as a challenge by 60% of rider survey respondents and 75% of agency survey respondents identified this as a top area for improvement. And it was listed as the most needed improvement by 92% of agency survey respondents in a separate category. So frequency is what builds ridership in public transportation. It's a policy choice to put more frequent service on corridors serving more people um, in terms that it grows ridership, but it also means that we can't put service everywhere. So it pulls away from coverage. Um, we heard, however, that more frequent service is what is most needed for the top improvement. Related to this, uh, strategy 1.3 about serving some trips faster means providing more direct service in key corridors, particularly those used by essential workers, so that we can get them more quickly from where they live to where they need to go. And the third one, strategy 1.5, maintain span of service, relates to keeping evening hours um, available and serving public transit on weekends. We're in an environment with a lot of warehouse distribution, um, two shift at minimum two shift services, sometimes more than that. And these travelers need to be able to arrive later in the day, get home uh, later in the evening and so forth. Six out of 10 of the, um, uh, of the open-ended comments of which we had many spoke to the need for improvements of these sorts in the public transportation network. Next slide, please. So this strategy, 1.2, support local bus routes in areas of greatest need. You heard Valerie speak to that as a, um, an, a topic that surfaced, people needing to get about locally within their home community to go for groceries and other kinds of local trips. 86, 85%, in fact, of e-survey respondents indicated that local trip making was difficult often or sometimes. Now, this particular strategy challenges the prior strategies of frequency and directness um, because it's in conflict, frequency versus this, which is coverage, where we have finite resources, we can't put them both towards more frequent service and towards greater local transportation improvements at the neighborhood level. Uh, usually we can only do one over the other. So we've coupled this strategy 1.2 with strategy 1.8, promote partnerships to support and encourage mobility solutions, particularly in relation to local trip making. New partnerships, invigorated partnerships. One excellent example in our region is VBTA's brokerage, which calls upon local services like Midge Nicosia's um, to help provide those local trips that we've identified as an important need. Next slide, please. So this next uh, pair of strategies is uh, 1.4, improve riders connectivity within and between fixed route bus services and between counties transit services. This was a concern that surfaced continuously steadily in stakeholder interviews and by three quarters of the e-survey respondents um, reflected in some of the works out Valerie highlighted earlier, improve connectivity. And of course, it does reflect our long distances. Um, well known to all of us from the mountains to the valley, from the high desert to the valley, from Morongo Basin in down to Palm Springs into Riverside and San Bernardino. These are long trips, but we need to continue to focus on how to make them through connecting, connecting uh, systems between the county and within the county. And again, I highlighted the pro promote partnerships as a way to help build these. I think van pools here represent a very important resource um, 
collaboration and partnering with large employers to promote van pools to serve these long trips and out of county trips is really critical and a low cost way to support those. That said, we need to focus particularly on how we subsidize lower income workers van pool expenses. Uh, again, keeping attention to the essential worker trip needs. Next slide, please. Strategy 1.6 is improve transit reliability, both for fixed route and demand response services and to promote rider facing technology tools uh, for buses, trains, van pool, uh, buses, trains and demand response. Certainly, we we know that reliability of service is um, is a, is a concern and improving on time performance is critical. So this quality of service dimension about which we heard from many stakeholders um, at lower registers, there's not great complaint that things are long. It's more that people want to know when they can expect that bus or that train. We have these bus arrival time uh, tools in place in the Victor Valley and in Omnitrans Metrolink as well. There are similar kinds of uh, technology tools for demand response systems to uh, advise riders, where's my ride, and let them know that that van is coming. The transit app, which I hope all of you have loaded on your phone, I meant to have it ready for an example, um, is now including bus arrival times, and that's another tool by which to communicate when that vehicle is coming. Research has shown repeatedly that people are willing to wait if they have some assurance that that vehicle is coming, they have some sense as to when it's coming, and that's reliable information. And the next strategy is about affordability. This is our final strategy in this group of strategies that are very much public transit focused. As Valerie indicated, the outreach for the coordinated plan took place in the summer of 2020. That was as it was only beginning to dawn on us what the long haul nature of the pandemic and it, the breadth of its impact on us all would be as jobs were beginning to disappear. So there was a consistent theme coming through about affordability concerns. In fact, 68% of agency e-survey respondents indicated that ensuring we had subsidized fares was very important for the lowest income individuals. But I would add that it's not necessarily for all riders, but for some. Strategy 1.7, Secure and Protect Fare Subsidy Programs, focuses on free bus fares for college state college students, um, CSUMB, or sorry, Cal State San Bernardino, um, community colleges, discounted train fares on Metrolink, and finally, uh, continued attention to the van pool subsidy, perhaps with more focus on seeking um, subsidy for the lowest income workers. So it's important that we continue to ensure affordability of services for those who um, need it most. I would add for those past tech members on the line that we all understand that the fare is only a fraction of the total cost between 10 and 20% of the total cost. So promoting a fare discount um, by no means um, it, it certainly has impacts and it's important during this period as we move out of the pandemic, but we need to recognize that there's still a lot of expense uh, related to transit provision. So that then uh, brings us to the end of the goal one strategies, eight of them. And at this point, we would like to invite any comments on perhaps projects you think are important that we reflect in our write up. Um, issues, concerns, reflections. Can we take a couple of minutes and see if anyone has any comments? Aaron, I see you've unmuted yourself. Yeah, but I was going to wait and see if other people, because no. you know I can dominate conversations. There's Mid. She has a comment. Let, let her go first. Thanks, Aaron. I'm not sure you want to hear my comment. I apologize, and it may not be the appropriate venue. Uh, but you mentioned us in relation to the brokerage which we were fully on board to do, but we are not invited as part of the brokerage right now because of a disagreement with the contract issue. And mostly because we try to protect our senior passengers. And so some of the disagreements we had with VVTA regarding um, their contract, it wasn't gonna work for our agency. And so they told us we were not gonna be involved with their, the brokerage right now. So unfortunately, okay. but we continue to serve our seniors in the high desert for free. Mitch, thank you for that comment. We'll follow up with you to understand that a little bit better so that we accurately reflect strengths and weaknesses in the coordinated plan. Thank you. Are there other comments, uh, questions, thoughts before I uh, pass it to Aaron? I don't see any hands. Okay, Aaron, go for it. Well, I mean, there's just a few things that I think are very positive to see on here as 
um, items of discussion that people are looking for. Obviously, we like to see that people, all they really want or need is to learn how to use transit. So I saw that as a third item there as far as a, a, com a frequent comment. And with things like travel training, that's easy to address. One thing I'm wondering, um, when we talk about the increase of frequencies for public transportation, was there any discussion or detail like where people were saying every, you know, if it came every 15 minutes, I'd use it, or if it came, was there a discussion of what frequency meant in, in any case? There was not. And to be frank, it's one of the weaknesses of the coordinated plan in that it gets a good breadth of picture, but not a deep one. Um, so, you know, particular neighborhoods or certain corridors, we don't have that information. That's where a short range transit plan would, would be able to provide that. Yeah, no, I, it's just one of those things because it, frequency is, there's that concept of frequency el elasticity where you're like trying to plan and you're, you're looking right. at, well, what level of frequency would garner me these new writers and things like that. So it, it's just interesting. But um, uh, the others I was wondering about was um, in, in terms of reliability, again, it's probably just more general, uh, uh, like where there are comments saying if it was more reliable, I'd use it but not much detail to that effect. Uh, more comments that of those using it, they have concerns when the bus is late or the van is late and they don't know when it's coming. Okay, that's what I figured. Anyways, just asking for clarification on those points, didn't want to dominate. Well, and we'll come, we'll circle back about more communication topics and travel training and so forth as we go forward. Um, but I do think that this plan is coming down more strongly on frequency and directness of travel than it is on the counterbalancing coverage. Local service is just terribly important, but we had much more louder noise about faster buses and more direct service. So for what it's worth. Nancy, any comments or questions um, from your perspective? All right, shall we keep going? You're a political- Hey, Heather, topic. this is Arnold, it's Gag. This is more of a personal question. Yes, Arnold. Education. I'm just curious about, um, uh, comments about people notifying elected officials to get them to advocate more strongly for transit. Does that, you guys get into that, that kind of, people Absolutely talk about that? Not. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. That wouldn't be our job. That would be the job of others perhaps. But um, I, I think your implicit point is that this is a really important time to protect public transit. You know, we all took huge hits in the loss of, um, in the concern that public transit was causing COVID-19 in New York City and so forth. And so as we rebuild ridership, we wanna also rebuild um, support for public transportation. So it's a good comment, Arnold. Yeah, so I apologize. I've never sat in this meeting or, or only once, and, but I really, I really think public transit and um, the past tech work, this is really vital. And I think it, this could really change how we do planning for the future. But I think we're somehow we're, we're not getting a, a ground full of support to make these things, you know, number one in, every, in everybody's mind. So anyway, sorry about well, that. I'd like to say one bus at a time and one trip at a time. So we'll just keep going. Um, Valerie, if we can move to goal two then, I do wanna move you all through all of these. So our roadmap continues with this notion of building capacity that we need to grow specialized transportation and alternative transportation, which includes rideshare, carpooling, car share, bicycling, walking, um, the array of needs that mass transportation cannot necessarily meet or cannot meet at all. So building capacity in the context of this goal is about two dimensions. It's the physical capabilities of more programs, more vehicles, more trips. It's also about human capital, um, the expertise, the capabilities of, of, of uh, per personnel running these programs to ensure that we're using best practices, that we're putting out safe and cost-effective travel opportunities. So there are five strategies here. These are primarily oriented to the human service uh, transportation providers um, and alternate transportation programs, but there is some role for public transportation uh, in coordination with these. Next slide, please. So the first two strategies um, are directly about building capacity and filling gaps that public transportation cannot fill. 2.1, specialized transportation programs and capacity should be increased. And 2.2, funding for operations, for technology, for vehicles, and for other equipment should be identified and promoted. 
So ensuring the economic health of these existing programs, encouraging new human service transportation to to programs to develop, that's the intent of these strategies, finding these creative but not mass transportation solutions to mobility challenges. Um, but it's also about ensuring that they are safe, that they're using best practices, that we're introducing technology and using it even in, on a small scale in small programs, that we have rider facing information, we're promoting services um, and ensuring certainly good vehicle replacement practices, again, related to safety. The 5310 program, which we've talked about a lot today um, as a primary funding source, is not an easy program to enter. It's got a lot of requirements. Um, it's highly competitive. But we have one new program, and I think that um, we have on the line Robin from Reach Out 29, Morongo Basin's Reach Out 29, who in partnership with the High Desert Medical Center um, put in and prevailed on a really creative project. I, I do want to encourage more projects like that because the Caltrans project is uh, once you've been awarded, it provides 100% of the funds. The toll credit means you don't have to have a local match. That's highly unusual um, outside of the COVID world. We always used to have to have matches. So everything we can do to build capacity of programs and bring down more funding um, for programs of this sort is important. Next slide, please. Strategy 2.3 returns to the issue of long distance trip making, that long distance trip should be a trip solution should be developed and promoted. And this is within the specialized transportation realm. So whereas previously it related to connections between the uh, mass transportation network, rail and bus and so forth, um, this is about what kind of long trip solutions can we promote um, and create and how we can help people who may not be able to use what kind of long distance public transit exists. For example, the mileage reimbursement programs are excellent because that escort helps an individual get into, for example, a complex medical center where they need some door to door escort type assistance. Uh, targeted shuttles of the sort that Loma Linda University described uh, to help with vaccine clinics is fabulous. Um, Needles has, uh, creating long distance trip making um, connections and serving trips. Needles has had some service over into Arizona and certainly the BV link coming down from Barstow to the Arrowhead Medical Center are among those solutions that have existed that need continued support. Next slide, please. So the last two strategies in this capacity building goal uh, relates to training. Um, uh, this plan is big on training. And the first is training staff of specialized transportation programs. I spoke earlier about the importance of human um, capital and the need to exchange information, build that organizational capability um, and learn by attendance at state, at Zoom meetings, not quite there yet, um, at Zoom meetings, at conferences, CALAC, the Rural Transportation Assistance Program, there's much to learn. I think this industry is in a time of profound change. To be frank, I think we're coming out of the 1950s and, and powering forward in part because of technology, um, in large part because of technology and partly because the pandemic has compelled that. But if you don't tap into these training opportunities, you lose the wealth of information that's there for you. So you can hear about other successes, you can report on your own. Um, and I think it's very important that human service agencies on this call and elsewhere build into their budgets training expense. Someday we will travel again. Uh, you need to pay dues to agencies that provide support in this way. And um, I think it's a very legitimate and appropriate expense. Strategy 2.5 is training in a different arena. Aaron Moore already highlighted the notion of travel training. And I believe we have Omnitrans travel trainer in the conversation as well. It's very important that we reach out to consumers as we heard there are high proportions of individuals from the agency perspective who don't know how to use the transportation that exists. So um, using tra travel training tools, growing buddy programs, reintroducing navigator programs. There used to be the Metrolink purple shirted, uh, purple jacketed people at stations that um, I always found very reassuring. And also helping people discover that they have alternatives, uh, the 211 ride program that the United Way program is sponsoring is a very important resource for travel training and connecting with specialized transportation services. 
So with that, the next slide brings us to the end of the goal two strategies. And I wonder if there are comments among those of you so patiently listening, um, comments about projects, uh, uh, ideas, concerns. Hi, hi Heather, I, I have a comment and it's probably an ongoing one. I mean, it's indirectly related to this is that I, I struggle with our past tech meeting and in general helping Aaron or Omnitrans with their CTSA is reaching out to the lawn profits um, out there. I know that there's more than the ones we directly relate to to help with them small with their small projects, but I would really like to figure out how we can get to more nonprofits and smaller agencies, especially since we do have the resource to help them with grant applications and submitting things. So I guess in looking over this, I think all of this is great. I'm just thinking about how do we reach out to more in the county um, who, you know, all those what, other little places. One, one thing I've found, Nancy, at least in working with the Measure I call for projects is so we have uh, a couple of lists, basically, depending on the kind of nonprofit, um, whether or not they're, you know, focus specifically on seniors or individuals with disabilities or their workshops or whatnot. We've got several hundred on there. When we do virtual workshops and invite people to these call for projects, virtual workshops because of the pandemic, um, a lot of things that we'll hear is that people will, will be, express some interest, but then for whatever reason, even with Measure I, even though our application, I try to make it as easy as possible a lot of times some of these nonprofits and smaller agencies have very few staff. And so they just express basically a concern over the complexity of the program. Um, so I think maybe one thing we're trying to consider is whether or not to have an individual during calls for projects that did, that's dedicated essentially to just helping people fill out and, and work on the application, even within our, between our virtual workshops. So maybe what you're looking at is identifying how can we as agencies provide that kind of support? Is that what you're looking at? Like, how can we help them? Fill yeah, out? I think it's a two thing. I think it's a two prong item, one where we um, can help people and have the resources to really just fill up the application with them and handhold them. And also reaching out to the nonprofit. So I know that there's several um, agencies out here who have a van, I mean, just even in San Bernardino, have a van or two, but are not connected to us. And so how well, do we get connected to them? And I guess that that's the other portion of it as well. One of the perfect examples um, just recently was uh, we met with the city of San Bernardino because they were saying, well, we didn't see our, uh, any of our centers or anything on your list when we did the award uh, presentation for the measure I call for projects. And we, you know, when we mentioned, well, we have the Center for Individual De Develop Center for Individual Development, we have Fifth Street Senior Center, we have the Perry Hill Senior Center and everything like that in our communications, then it was it just came down to, oh, you know, when we did address it with them most of the time, they felt like, well, we don't have the capacity to do it. So really we're gonna emphasize as we do future calls for projects that, you know, maybe myself or Ariana will spend a lot more time just working with them and saying, hey, we're gonna dedicate some time each week to provide like a vir virtual workshop to help that way. I don't, I don't know if that's at all helpful for this process, but it's just one thing I think, I, I completely agree with you that we really need to start focusing that way. If we have agencies where we're providing funding, we need to provide that assistance. It may be that we, um add an additional strategy or figure out whether it's a project related to technical assistance. The 5310 application is very complicated. I have no doubt that it was the role that Dennis Brooks played in helping Reach Out 29 and others secure funds through a very competitive statewide process. So Aaron, I really do commend um, providing extra support to um, uh, agencies. In the interest of time, I'm going to move on because I know we still have a lot and of- there's, there's two people that have Mitch, their hands up. Had oh. hands up. Okay, Midge, Nicosia, and then Arnold. Just uh, quickly, I think that it would help you to put some nonprofits in that communication that are already 53 funded. I mean, we've had 5310 funding for four or five, four or five uh, cycles can't remember, maybe 
to refer, but it would help with the communication if you're trying to add other smaller nonprofits to give that experience because it can be intimidating up front, but you know, once you're in the program, it's, it's a different situation. So maybe the communication and bringing along other small nonprofits in that communication to give them their input and experience about the process might yeah. help you add some of the smaller agencies. Very good comment. I'm gonna to go to Tiara first. Um, thank you, Midge. Hi, this is Tiari. Um, I think all of these points look really great. I think they address a lot of the issues and needs that we see on behalf of our people. My question is about terminology. Um, in strategy 2.5, where it references travel training for consumers, is consumers a term that is used throughout the plan to refer to writers, or is that a term that applies specifically to the people supported by our human services agencies? Uh, it, it's a fair question. Um, the plan will speak about riders and potential riders. I prefer not to use the term clients because clients, I think, is very specific to human service agencies. So I have used consumers as a broader term. Um, it's a good question. Maybe we should just go with travel training for riders and potential riders. Um, well, I was just going to suggest if you, if you want we can talk maybe offline about, about, there's been a kind of a shift in the terminology that we use for the people that we support. And I think it would, this would be a great opportunity to carry that through into this plan, but we can certainly talk offline about the details of that. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll follow up Tiari. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, Arnold, you can keep it short, but no personal comments allowed unless they're directly related. <laughs> Very good. Just uh, just to let you know, we have, Skag has the same issue, and we actually went out and paid people, nonprofits, to be a part of the Skag input process. Oh, that's interesting. Incentives. Okay. Okay, incentives. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to goal three. Uh, this is about, as the roadmap continues, goal three, promote transportation choices to educate riders gatekeepers and the general public about available options. This is about communication. Every coordinated plan that AMA has touched has um, worked with communication in a variety of ways. And impressively, as we've alluded to, um, large numbers, in, in fact, 71% of agency personnel reported their consumers often or sometimes don't know how to ride public transportation. This is a great opportunity. And this means that with both riders and potential riders, um, agency personnel who work with them and with the general public, we want to figure out an array of strategies and how to inform people about what exists and then how to make them help them feel comfortable enough that they actually use it. After all, this is Southern California where the car culture was born. It's very difficult to get us out of our cars and onto public transit or specialized transportation. So these seven strategies are ways in which to promote and educate people about transit. They're oriented towards public transit operators, human service transportation providers, and partner organizations that we've talked about, which include large human service systems, uh, such as DOS and other county entities. Next slide, please. So the first is about promoting and educating the public on safety and security measures. Um, again, I alluded to um, the hit that public transit took as the concern uh, emerged that it was a locus of spreading COVID-19. People have very real and legitimate concerns about that, and we need to continue to promote the safety measures transit entities are taking. SBCTA has a campaign, Aptus Health and Safety Pledge, which all of the public operators in the county uh, joined into. Uh, SBCTA promoted it on its website and in the social media and in press releases. That that's the kind of thing and more that we need to convey, but human service agencies need to convey as well what they're doing to keep people safe. Metrolink's measure, um, messaging about how full is the train, uh, apps related to that is another important approach. So these will be among the kinds of projects uh, to be encouraged in this strategy. Next slide, please. These two strategies, 3.2 regarding technology, 3.3 website and social media use, 
obviously um, center around the critical role of technology in promoting and encouraging use of public transportation. I think the pandemic obviously has catapulted society into highest use levels of the internet, including people in our target groups um, who may have had limited use or limited access previously. Um, there has been much greater use and more access than before. So how do we capitalize on this? And to what extent can we use the technology tools available to help people understand you can get there from here um, and then to instill confidence that they actually will try to get there from here and not just think about it. Next slide, please. So strategy 3.4 is promote alternative transportation. Actually, this should read promote alternative and specialized transportation. And this speaks to the um, the double-edged sword of promotion. And I think for human service providers and for demand response providers, they tend to shy away from promoting because you don't wanna have trips you can't serve. You don't wanna leave people um, without a trip. You don't wanna build waiting lists. But the problem with that is that we unintentionally keep some of these services a well-kept secret. So we need to figure out judicious promotion of specialized transportation and alternative transportation, just as we heard Midge talk earlier on this call um, about the tools she was using to promote. Well, actually that was a past tech meeting, Midge, where you talked about building promotional tools. But in any case, uh, this should also include van pools, which straddle both public transit and human service trans or spe alternative transportation transportation. Um, we need to promote that carpooling. We have two programs now in the Valley, uh, Victor Valley and in San Bernardino. They're building upon a regional database across the Los Angeles region that can help expand the number of matches, rideshare matches um, for these sorts of services programs. And finally, we have other kinds of creative things like promoting car share and um, Needles has had a very effective program which helps people get across the, the state line uh, to make out of town trips where transit doesn't go, active transportation, bicycling, walking, uh, promoting the health aspects of these, and certainly um, the environmental aspects of these. We have begun to hear now for the first time environmental concerns in relation to how people move about the county. In our county, we haven't heard that in prior cycles, so I'm encouraged by that. So um, moving now to the uh, next group of strategies, what are the tools we can begin to think about? And I do see a couple hands and just hold for a moment, we'll come back to those. Um, what are the tools that we can use to educate and promote? They are various. One are destination oriented transit information to major trip generators. So for example, how do you take the BV link down to the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center? What are those uh, kinds of shuttles that um, can get you around Loma Linda University Medical Center or using connections on Omnitrans and the SBX to get to the uh, Loma Linda medical facilities? Um, what are the creative ways in which we can um, communicate to people how you can travel from here. And finally, who are the people gatekeepers who need to have this information, who need to understand that as they talk with um, patients in their hospitals, uh, reception people doing scheduling, um, scheduling of staff people, what they need to understand about how you can get there from here. So uh, providing destination training, but then ensuring that gatekeepers also get access to this to help communicate how consumers can make those trips. Last and not least is promote coordinated multimodal performance reporting. We're talking through this coordinated plan about a breadth of strategies and projects that will fall out from them. We need to report on those successes too. The value of reporting at the system level um, in an ongoing continuing way about how much is being provided and where and how uh, San Bernardino County Transportation Authority has launched a new quarterly reporting process. It will soon be up on the website. It has a um, multimodal focus on each of the operators and on modes and is a way of reporting out um, transparency around public transportation, improving the quality of information that's reported, identifying trends and where things are changing, how we might respond and helping to suggest where there may be gaps. So reporting is as important as developing the projects that underwrite, undergird that. Now with that, I will turn it back to you all for discussion backups. There you go. Um, uh, I don't know who came on first. Tiari, did you have a comment and then we'll go to Arnold? Uh, no, I didn't have a comment. Oh, your little hands stay up there. 
Okay. I will remove that, sorry. <laughs> Arnold, did you have a comment or was that from before as well? That was from before, but I did write down a bunch of comments that I wanted to ask. I can just email them to you. Do I can read them off to you if you want. Um, why don't you email them? I'm worried about time and we just okay. have just a couple more things to cover. Just um, send me your email and I'll send those to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any other comments related to communication? All right, we will do last but not least, which is goal four, infrastructure. Develop infrastructure projects that promote access and safe travel by coordinated plan target populations. Um, strategy 4.1 is uh, target and enhance passenger facilities at locations of greatest need um, to improve safety, comfort, and accessibility. What is in the built environment that we need to pay attention to on behalf of the target groups, persons with disabilities, older adults, persons of low income? Um, we have some very interesting tools. SBCTA's new web portal on active transportation can help us identify bus stops and in time perhaps um, identify where we have facilities and how those uh, how we can identify facilities where there's greatest need, ensuring that this stays on the agenda um, for Omnitrans. Particularly, they've done a lot of work on bus stops. We may want to hear more about them as we move forward. The next strategy 4.2 is uh, the ne necessity of improving travel safety for bicycles and pedestrians, bicyclists. This was a very high, uh, area of concern, safety uh, about moving about the local community surfaced a lot in the stakeholder interviews and comments that, again, that portal SBCTA is developing will help us geographically identify where there are needs and how we can build more safe sidewalks and bicycle lanes. And finally, um, how did we lose our PowerPoint? Um, okay, I'm sorry. So. The, finally, the um, last strategy, 4.3, is procure supplies and install equipment that supports personal safety and ensures in-vehicle protections. The language of strategy 4.3 comes directly from, the, from CRISA, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2021. That was the relief bill before this most recent one of this week. Um, but we included this language uh, for two reasons. One, obviously public transit operators need to continue to go after and seek additional funds to support additional expense. Secondly, we hope there will be eligibility for the human service transportation providers who also have incurred additional expense um, in, in getting some funding to help keep their programs safe. So with that, with going to um, the next slide and the one beyond this, uh, Valerie, if you would be so kind, um, we would invite any general comments or questions that you might have about these four goals, 23 strategies, an integrated approach um, to, to build mobility for the target groups, but we hope for all San Bernardino County residents. Heather, this is Josh. Um, Josh. Can I make a um, suggestion on the on the goal number four on the um, infrastructure side of things? On the, on, on the active transportation, can we add the specific language related to first mile, last mile? Oh, yes. That's, that's very something that's, yeah, that because as an active transportation planner, that language stands out and that it means we have to improve um, ped bike facilities around stations. Okay, I think that's a very good point. I think that should probably be within the goal, improve infrastructure to promote first mile, last mile connections. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Anyone else? Well, you, you are very patient. It's a lot of information. I will turn it back to Valerie to close out um, our meeting and invite you to another more concrete way um, to offer comment. Yes, there's one more area where we need your help. Um, we need your thoughts on these strategies that Heather just walked through to know uh, what is most important to implement um, for your community, for your clientele, your, the, the writers that you serve um, or are working with. Um, I know they're all important, but we um, need to show um, uh, prioritization to implement. Um, so we hope to address them all, but there's some that need to be um, addressed more quickly. So there is a brief survey 
um, at gosbcta.com slash coordinated plan. Um, so maybe grab lunch and then um, do that after your lunch break or you have till Friday, the survey will be up there. Um, it asks you to rate each strategy as high priority or moderate priority. Um, at the same web link, go sbcta.com slash coordinated plan. We have our open house tab, which has materials like this handout that lay out all the strategies for you. So you can use that as a resource to um, refresh yourself of, of, of what we walked through today. And there's also information on findings um, and the, the whole plan process. Um, so please go uh, rate the strategies today or through Friday, we'll have that web page open. And um, just before we close, a couple of comments on what happens next. Um, go rate your strategies, please. Um, and we'll use that information on the implementation priority to help us wrap up this coordination plan. Uh, we have a draft final to SBCTA in May. Um, and then the board will be, um, the board and transit committee will be approving it um, either at the end of May or beginning of June, depending which meeting it goes to. At that point, it'll be posted at um, gosbcta.com um, and we'll invite you to use it. Um, all you grant applicants, there's a, a wealth of information in there, as I um, said earlier, beautiful maps um, and lots of de demographic information and information about where the transit network does exist. So that will help you in your 5310 and your Measure I grant applica applications. So with that, are there any final comments or questions about the process? Um, Arthur, Arnold, sorry, Arnold and others, you can send an email to mail at amatransitplanning.com if you have a comment we, we didn't get to. Um, um, you know, can you send that again? I don't have a pin with me. Give me yeah. mail at ama, A M M A, transitplanning.com. I also can email you, Arnold. Um, okay, that'd be great. There is a comment box at the survey here. Um, so as, as you're feeling, filling out um, rating strategies, um, we have room for more comments there as well. And Josh, I see your hand, yes. Yeah, uh, Valerie, just a quick, uh, this is more a question for Nancy. Um, have you discussed this with Monique and her ad, uh, our board equity ad hoc committee uh, work and, and possibly doing a presentation there? Um, I haven't talked to her about doing a presentation, but I have told her about the coordinated plan during our discussion, but I can mention it to her as well. Okay, thanks. I just had a quick question. So the general public can comment on this? Absolutely, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you everyone. You're grand to have sat through this with us. We'll look forward to your rating of the strategies we needed to comply with law. So go forth and rate. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, guys.